Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about how to get good bass in small rooms. Good bass usually is a uh, thing that happens in larger rooms, but obviously real estate's expensive and we, we all have to be uh, uh, relegated, if you will, to a smaller volume and, and space requirement. So how do we get good bass in small rooms? First thing we have to look at is room size and volume. Okay. Room size, the dimensions of the room, the width, the length, the height, all create opportunities for low frequency wavelengths that are 30, 40, 50 foot long, not to fit. So we want to minimize the way they don't fit. And we do that through selecting the proper length, the proper width, and the proper height. Now that said, 30 foot is proper but we don't get that today. Real estate's just too expensive. So most of us can't have 30 feet in, in one dimension, let alone two dimensions. So we have to realize that that's the ideal situation and work down from there. So matching the size of the driver to the size of the room that we have to deal with is also very important because we don't want to put too much energy in a room that doesn't have the volume to handle it. We don't want to put too little of energy in a room that has so much volume that it can't handle it. Both are opposite ends of an extreme that we don't want. So we want to match the driver size to the room volume. A 10 inch driver versus a 12 inch driver can add up to 2 to 3 dB more energy just because it's 2 inches bigger. So it's 20% larger. but it gets us another 2 to 3 dB in energy. Now that you say that might not sound like a lot in middle and high frequencies, and it probably isn't, but when you get to low frequency and it's plus 2, plus 3 dB of energy more, you just exasperate the problems that are already in the room and you make them much larger than they really are. So a good match is, is there. Uh, treatment, you have to realize that your room is not going to be ideal unless it falls into that 30-foot dimensional uh, issue we just discussed. So treatment is critical. Treatment, the right type and the right amount. You have to have type and amount. Those two things are critical. So you have to remember that the pressure produced by subwoofers that give us the good base in our rooms is a pressure activated situation and there's only three treatments that will work for that. Diaphragmatic membrane and Hemholtz. So you can take that technology, you can build freestanding units, lots of them, or if you're in the build phase, you can build that technology into the wall itself and not have any freestanding units around. When you build it into the walls, you're able to match the absorption technology with the area of the room that has that particular frequency modal pressure issue. So you can go out through the whole room and really wrap the room in low frequency absorption technology, which will give you a lot of definition, attack, and decay um, in your room. We actually use activated carbon and incorporate our diaphragmatic absorption technology in the wall. And you can uh, read about that on our website. Location, location, location. Each room, depending on its dimensions and volume, has certain room modal issues at certain places. When you do freestanding units, you have to find those places, put the right box in that area. If you're building it into the wall, the same thing occurs. It's in a particular location, but you have to allow it for its frequency and its strength through the absorption method that you use. So room size, volume to driver size. If you don't have 30 feet, everything's an issue. We have to manage it correctly. Pick the right treatment, pick the right amount, and put it in the walls or make it freestanding. But remember, each part of the room has different frequency issues and requires a different absorber sorber that accommodates that frequency talk issue. About part Thank two, you. how to get good bass in a small room. Part one, we talked about matching the size of the driver with the room volume. We talked about the right kind of treatment to use and, and a little bit on location where to put that treatment. Today we want to make sure that we locate within our room the frequencies that are causing the problems. And they're all over they're usually at the room boundary surfaces and the frequencies from 30 cycles to 80, 90, 100 cycles are always in that borderline area. They can be more towards the room center, but their amplitude is diminished. So we don't get too concerned about those issues unless we're just putting so much energy in the room that we can't, um, 
we can't deal with all of it in that particular room size. So we want to find the places in our room that are causing the room modal issues and, and work on those places. When we find those places, we choose freestanding or in-wall technology to deal with them. And if we're using freestanding then or in-wall, we have to choose, is it frequency specific? Are the problems in that area from 30 to 50 cycles? Are they more broadband, maybe 30 to 70 cycles, 80 cycles? So we have to pick broadband or frequency specific absorption for that area of the room. It's not one size fits all when it comes to these pressure situations in our small rooms. All surfaces in the room have to be treated with some type of low fre frequency management technology. It just provides a more pressure balance within the room and, and relieves pressure at all the surfaces. So it's a good idea to do it, especially in today's smaller rooms. The distribution and placement of all that can be calculated. Ceiling. Don't forget about the ceiling. The ceiling is a great place for low frequency absorption. Usually the ceiling to the floor distance is a small one. Underneath the seats in your home theater can be a great place for low frequency absorption also. So don't forget about the ceiling. You can save it for a last resort because installation of low frequency technology in the ceiling is not easy unless you're doing it from a, from a build. So how to get good base in small rooms, part two. Find the frequencies in the room, where they're located, what problems they are. Find the particular kind of broadband or frequency specific uh, technology to address it. Look at putting it in all surfaces, especially in small rooms with, with lower uh, dimensions and volumes. And don't forget about the ceiling. It's a place to put it, but it's something that we kind of save for the end because we know it's there and hopefully we, we don't want to have to use it. If you enjoyed Thank you. today's video, if you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com, and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.